It's getting hot in New England. A new study has found that the idyllic New England region could eventually become a hotbed of volcanic activity. Using data from earthquake measurement devices, Rutgers University researchers analyzed the speed and direction of seismic waves to visualize subsurface conditions. They detected a massive upwelling of hot rock under Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts after noticing the area was noticeably hotter than neighboring regions. Though the hot mass is slowly and steadily rising, it will take millions of years before it reaches the surface and reshapes the area's geography or create a volcano. Scientists say what's happening in New England may be similar to the onset of the Yellowstone supervolcano. It emphasizes how intricate and dynamic the Earth's subsurface features are and definitely warrants further study. Keep watching to see what else is brewing beneath the surface. Sometimes your only option is to run. When a volcano erupts big time, it spits out a fast-moving and incredibly destructive mass of material known as a pyroclastic flow. And according to the United States Geological Survey, if you ever find yourself in the path of one, you should run in the opposite direction and run fast. Pyroclastic flows are made up of a basal flow of volcanic ash, lava, rock, and gases, which move beneath a cloud of ash. Their temperatures can exceed 1,000 degrees Celsius, and they can move at 700 kilometers per hour. Typically, pyroclastic flows move downslope, but they can go uphill when the ratio of gas to ash is higher. This is known as a pyroclastic surge. These dense pyroclastic surges can even move over water. Pyroclastic flows generally destroy everything in their path, including vegetation, buildings, and people. There are generally two kinds of pyroclastic flow. The first type forms when an eruption column cools and the ash becomes too dense to maintain an upward thrust. The second type is rarer and occurs when so much pressure builds up inside a volcano that it erupts laterally and boils over. The last known example of this is when Mount St. Helens in Washington State erupted in 1980. So there you have it. If you ever happen to be near a volcano when it blows its top, now you know what to do. Volcano Rising Scientists have located the magma source of an Italian supervolcano that's considered one of the most dangerous in the world. Campi Flegre is a volcanic caldera to the west of Naples, which last erupted in 1538, but was responsible for a series of small earthquakes in the 1980s. Researchers who have long puzzled about where the caldera's magma is coming from have now pinpointed the location of a hot zone about four kilometers under the nearby city of Pozzoli. From 1982 and 1984, rising gas and magma caused the ground in the crater to swell, but was prevented from rising to the surface by a deep rock formation. The magma instead spread out laterally, causing minor earthquakes. The caldera has grown hotter since, and with pressure building, scientists fear it could soon erupt and put the entire region at risk. Volcanologists cannot say for sure what the scale of any future eruption could be, but are closely monitoring Campi Flegri. If Yellowstone blows, it's goodnight Vienna. A volcanic eruption at Yellowstone National Park would be an American natural disaster on a scale that the country has never seen. The event would potentially see millions of casualties and wipe out the West Coast, with its ash fall stretching far beyond U.S. borders. This would cause a volcanic winter, during which widespread starvation would be a threat. According to UN estimates, global food reserves could last only 74 days. Fortunately, the actual chances of that happening are 1 in 730,000, and America's top brains are on the case to stop it from even happening. To preempt such a catastrophe, NASA has developed a plan to drill underneath Yellowstone and pump its magma chamber full of water, extracting the heat. Cooling the magma rock would occur at a rate of one meter per year, meaning it could take thousands of years to eliminate the risk of eruption. The cost of NASA's plan is estimated to be 3.5 billion US dollars. However, the space agency expects the clean energy derived from heat extraction would offset this via lower power costs and the creation of geothermal plants. This plan only covers Yellowstone. It doesn't include the other half dozen supervolcanoes in the USA or the 20 others elsewhere on the planet. But experts say they rarely blow and Yellowstone only erupts every 600,000 years. And when was the last time it blew? Around 600,000 years ago, give or take a few millennia. 
The Four Main Types of Volcanoes A volcano is an opening in the Earth's surface where molten rock can escape. The Earth's crust is made up of tectonic plates that shift and move. Volcanoes are often located at the fault lines between these plates. Cinder cone volcanoes occur when lava is ejected from a volcanic vent. Lava is shot into the air and pieces accumulate around the vent. This creates a circular or oval-shaped cone with a bowl-shaped crater at the top. Composite volcanoes contain a conduit system that channels magma to the surface. These volcanoes can have clusters of vents along the sides of the mountain where lava flows out. Shield volcanoes are large, broad volcanoes where lava pours out in thin layers, allowing it to travel farther down the shallow slopes. They build up slowly, with hundreds of eruptions creating many layers. Lava domes are created when small masses of thick lava can't flow far from the source, so domes pile up around the vent. The dome grows by expansion of lava from within, and the mountain forms from material spilling off the sides of the dome.